Hello everyone, my name is Cameron, welcome back to the channel. And before we get into the predictions, I want to specify and say that I'm very sorry that this channel has kind of not had as much over the past week. I've had some personal life stuff going on that has kind of taken precedent over the channel. Um, I also want to say that we have a bulletin board here now, so I can kind of stay, uh, tag stuff up there. We have a carpet down on the floor, which will probably be moved before I build the PC. Or the PC will not be built on here, and then I'll have something to get the PC off of the carpet so it doesn't generate as much heat because that can really kill the PC. Um... It doesn't stretch super far, but it does kill a little bit of the echo because a lot of the echo was coming from my voice bouncing off the ground because the ground is just a concrete slab. <clears throat> I still need to get something to go behind me and maybe something to go above me. I don't fully know if I want to get something above me or not just yet just because it might block out my light. Uh, this is my second time recording this because while I was recording it last time, um, I accidentally stopped the video when I was trying to dismiss an alarm that I didn't want coming off because I didn't realize it was still on. Uh, so, let's get into this. First, we have a men's singles match. We have Tommaso Ciampa versus Karrion Cross. Um, Jesse and I have both predicted Cross for this. Um, and both predicted Karrion Cross for this match um, because it's like what his third match. So far in NXT, I don't think he's going to lose this. Uh, it's not a Lance Archer situation where he doesn't give a shit if he loses the match. He's kind of just there to be there. You know, Cross is just there, or Archer's just there to kill people. Uh, Cross is more methodical, I feel like, and I feel like him losing this match would not be a good thing. And, you know, Tommaso might be moving up to the main roster. Who knows? Um, I've heard that there's apparently a new rule that Vince McMahon wants to follow, except for a few people like Shayna Baszler, where if they have a storyline going in NXT, they cannot come up to the main roster, um, which is why Dominic Dijakovic has finished up with his, his storyline with Keith Lee, because he is being called up to Raw very soon. Um, you also We also saw that uh, Matt Riddle, who just finished up with Timothy Thatcher last week, is being called up to SmackDown, um, that being announced by Kurt Angle last week on SmackDown. Um, so Tommaso could potentially be making his jump to the main roster finally. Who knows? Uh, next we have the NXT Women's Championship Triple Threat Match. We have Rhea Ripley, Charlotte Flair, Io Shirai. Uh, Jesse and I have both gone for Flair as... It's not that we don't think Io deserves it. Io fucking deserves it. I'm going to say that right now. I love Io Shirai. She's fantastic, and I think she deserves this championship wholeheartedly. I think Rhea is fantastic, and she deserves a championship wholeheartedly. The problem is... I don't think they're going to drop the title off of Charlotte just yet. Unless Charlotte requested this so that way she wouldn't be pinned. She could still kind of look strong and then she could go out and do whatever the fuck she wants to do and take a break from wrestling for a bit if that's what she wants. Um, but Flair winning kind of makes more sense right now because she's kind of trying to be the big bully of coming back to NXT, being a champion and, and just dominating the brand and you know, that's what she's done so far. It's fantastic, the work she's been doing since coming back to NXT. And I feel like somebody soon within the year is going to take it off her. I just don't know who. I don't think... I don't think it's going to be Rhea tonight, or tomorrow night. I don't think it's going to be Io tomorrow night. It could very well be Io in the future, but I don't think it's going to be tomorrow night. For the specific reason of... Charlotte's title run hasn't gone on for very long so far, which is not a bad thing. I'm not saying it's a bad thing or a good thing, but I do think... I'm trying to fix this camera because it's still a little crooked. I do think Charlotte retaining is the best situation tomorrow night. Future, that's going to change, but tomorrow night, I definitely think it's the best solution. Next, we have the NXT North American Championship Keith Lee, or title match, Keith Lee versus Johnny Gargano. Uh, we've both gone for Keith Lee. I think Lee is going to win by some nefarious means. I think Johnny is going to cheat and get caught or something like that. Hello, Johnny could cheat and win, just like he did Wednesday, where he stabbed keys into Keith Lee's eye, which is going to be a storyline thing going into uh, tomorrow night. I think Johnny... Might still do might do something like that and either lose or win. Um, I don't really know for sure. Johnny doesn't need the title, like he really doesn't. But I would be kind of excited to see what would happen at the next, like the next time next NXT when Johnny and Candice are at the dinner table. You know, they'd have the cup, they'd have whatever they use to beat Keith Lee, and then they'd have the NXT Championship probably behind or North American Championship probably behind them. 
and I think that would be kind of cool. Um, again, I don't know if that's what's going to happen. I'm kind of excited to see this match. It's one of the ones I'm really excited for, along with the Women's Championship Triple Threat match. Um, but yeah, uh, sadly there's no NXT Tag Team title match for for uh, tomorrow night, even though Brizongo did win a number one contendership Triple Threat match to take on Imperium, which... Sorry, no, it's not going to go the way I want it to. I want Brizong. I'd love for Brizongo to win, but it's probably not going to go that way. Next, we have a women's three-on-three -three tag team match. We have Mia Yim, Shotzi Blackheart, and Tegan Knox versus Candice LeRae, Dakota Kai, and Raquel Gonzalez. I have gone for LeRae and her team. Jesse has gone for Yim and her team, and it is the only match we actually defer on for the entire night. Um, I'm going with LeRae and her team for the simple reason of. I think if Johnny loses, LeRae needs to win to keep the feud going. Because it seems like they want this feud to keep going. Um, it's a good feud so far. I'm enjoying it. It also keeps uh, Shotzi and uh, Raquel's feud going, and it keeps Knox and Kai's feud going. Um, which, let's be honest, though Knox and Kai is still fucking burning hot for that feud. That feud's amazing, and it's one of the feuds that I'm very excited for right now, and I'm loving every minute of it. Um, so I think that one's going to, I think that would be the best way to, for them to do it. They have Kai and her team lose or Yim and her team lose. So that way they can continue the, the separate feuds that go into this match. Um, I don't think it will continue until, eh, maybe it would continue until SummerSlam. I don't know. I don't know if it continue to till war games, but if they could get it to continue to war games, they could have a three on three war games match. Or, fuck, I don't know, maybe toss Charlotte and Rhea in there? Fuck, I have no idea. Or Eo and Rhea, maybe? Um, but yeah, do something to kind of get the, the the sort of build for a War Games match in the future, potentially. If all of these feuds are still going on by the time November rolls around, which I doubt. Eh, maybe some of them, but probably not the exact feuds that are going on right now. Next, we have a men's singles match. Finn Balor versus the man who took him out of action for a couple weeks, Damian Priest. Uh, we have both gone for Finn Balor. Um, I don't know if Priest is going to get called up anytime soon or if they're going to have him go into a feud with potentially Johnny Gargano or Damian or, uh, Keith Lee. Um, obviously, he was going after the NXT North American Championship, and then he fought Johnny Gargano for a bit. Or Sorry, Dijakovic fought Johnny Gargano um, right before he left. Um... But yeah, it's it's kind of one of those things of, could this be his last thing before getting called up? Um, again, I'm going back to that rule that Vince McMahon now has, that they have to finish their storylines in NXT before they go up to the main roster. Meaning, Damian Priest would have to finish his storyline with Finn Balor before getting called up. So, like, he'd have to... He'd have to, to finish this match to kind of get the decider of, okay, is he going to get called up or is he not going to get called up? Um, it happened with Matt Riddle, it happened with Dijakovic, who hasn't actually had his formal announcement for being called up just yet. I think they're going to do it after uh, the pay-per-view, after uh, Backlash on the 14th. Um, so, yeah, we'll see where this goes in the next few weeks after Sunday. Uh, and then next we have, finally, the NXT Championship Backlot Brawl match between Adam Cole and the Velveteen Dream. If the Velveteen Dream loses, this is his last time. He's not allowed to challenge again for this championship as long as Adam Cole holds the title. Um, this match was pre-taped. I don't know the outcome of it. I've luckily not had it been spoiled. Um, a lot of... It's a very cinematic match from what I've heard. Um, uh, the good news is there's been a, a huge thing for uh, WWE since COVID-19 started where they have said, look, if you spoil the match... Like, if you go out and this match gets out, and because there's only a handful of people uh, helping with each match now, um, but they say, if this match gets out, we know who's working on this match. We will go to each one of you, and if you we find out you did it, you're fired. Like, that's the thing they put out. They're like, look, you will be fired if we find out you leaked the result to a match, which I personally think is a great idea. It stops people from leaking out the matches. I think more often when there's a pre-taped show, WWE should make the fans sign an NDA to keep them from spoiling matches. Like, before they even go into the show, they should sign the NDA. And if they don't want to, they can get a full refund and leave. Because, you know what I mean? Because, personally, I hate it when they have a show in the UK. And, like, two hours before I get to watch it, I have it spoiled for me. And I know what the fuck happened. I hate when that happens. Like, I want 
to be able to enjoy the show and not have things spoiled for me, which is why I really like the fact that Vince McMahon and WWE have put this sort of clause in into this with the whole situation in the world, saying if you spoil a match, you your job is gone. Like you're you're gone. And some people may say I'm an asshole, but it's business. Like that's how it is. It's a good thing to do, personally speaking. I love the fact that they're doing this. So, like, I don't want matches spoiled for me if they're pre-taped. I want to enjoy them fully. Uh, but we've both taken Adam Cole, baby. Um, we've also looked at this one in two different ways. We could see that um, Velveteen Dream gets called up after losing this match. But, again, the stuff with Dexter Loomis is kind of cool, so who knows. Or we could see Adam Cole and the rest of the Undisputed Era getting called up, which is less likely because they are NXT. They bleed black and gold. Like, you can see it. Even their attires are black and gold. So them kind of going up to the main roster would be a little bit weird. But, personally speaking, either way this match goes, I'm going to enjoy it because it's a cinematic, pre-taped, backlot brawl match, and I love backlot brawls. So, yeah. Uh, let me know what your guys' predictions are down in the comments below, and be prepared Monday for the review as long as nothing gets in the way of me watching it Sunday night and getting and recording the review. Hope you guys enjoyed. Stay golden. Peace.